Watch this. One finger. All right. That's crazy. Look at that. All right. Super easy. Mind you, I have 285 slicks up front. All right, so it's Saturday. New install, new week. The car's on the ground. Everything looks freaking good. We took this car out the other day just to check the suspension, wheels, and everything. Seems okay. Now, I do have crazy Pirelli slicks up front. They're 285s uh, front and back, so they're a bit hard to turn from a dead stop since I did convert my power steering into a depowered manual rack. So, how are we gonna solve that? Check this out. Bam! Check that out. This is an electronic power steering column setup by ePower Steering. You can buy this through ePower Steering, you can buy it through K Miata and several other vendors. But the, uh, the idea is basically add power steering to your manual rack or your power steering rack if you wanna remove the, uh, you know, the hydraulic pump in your engine bay to clean it up a little bit. Or if you have a swap, you have a K swap, you have a LS swap. If you don't have space for a hydraulic pump, lines, hoses, uh, reservoir for the oil, you can use this setup. It basically uses the OE column right here. They cut it down to add this JDM brand Koyo uh, motor. And this came off a Chevy Equinox. So this is actually an OE Chevy part. So, you know, you'll get the OE quality. Uh, plus it's made by Koyo, who also makes the, uh, the MR2 uh, bearings that I'm using for my spindles. So this is, it's kind of cool because it's still a Japanese brand, though it is for a Chevy Equinox, it is still a JDM brand. And uh, you get all these pieces right here to basically make this into a bolt-on setup for your Miata. So if you have a V8, if you have a K-swap, you have other swaps, this can be your, your lifesaver really because my 285s up front is insane to turn uh, manually. And with this, it should be easy, uh, I hope. Now it comes with the power wire right here. Plug it into your battery or to your alternator. It comes with a controller. Now this one I've already fitted into the blanking that I have. I have an extra spot for, you know, whatever, because I don't have the, uh, what came on this? Cruise control, yeah. I don't have cruise control, so this side was blank. All I did was drill a hole, put all the guts in there, redid the wiring with my own loom, and uh, kept everything the same. So the rack instructions right here includes the breakdown of what you're getting. So as you can see right there, the motor is on the middle, number four, number two is the hanger, number three is the little collar, this dude right here. And then the column obviously is number seven, number six is that big box, which is the ECU, this dude right here, and the wiring harness for your battery right there. And that's actually how the controller works from the factory, as you can see right there. All right, now, like I said, I've already fitted it into my blanking right here. This isn't really that hard to do if you just have a drill and, you know, some glue and stuff. But I, I used potting kind of resin, conformal coating, so it's like nice and hard in there. It's not gonna come off. And uh, you just cut the, the switch length. As you can see right here, this looks long, right? Right here, the switch. You just cut that to length wherever you wanna put this. Now, you don't have to, have this like showing you could hide it somewhere but you know I, I want to adjust it on the fly now Ken the owner of e-power steering says Miatas should only use about I don't know a quarter of the power now this can go all the way you know way way over but uh, you don't really need that much assist on a Miata since this thing doesn't weigh anything now this setup right here might look a little bit different from what you're gonna get because I actually shortened the wires right here for my application, because I, I don't want extra wires, but uh, some people do want extra wires, so I added, uh, I added my own twist to this. I cut it in half, added my looms, uh, repinned this, and you know, it's 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 like everything I have on my car. It's, it's all very customized to my look. I swap all the hardware too. See that right there? Button or not button caps? Those are all stainless steel. All the hardware is now the same thing: stainless steel and uh, nice and clean, as you can see right there. Now, you don't have to do this, obviously. This is just to kind of have a cohesive look with my setup, because my setup, 
you know, uses all those hardware. So uh, one thing to note, Ken from the uh, e-power steering company, they, they rebuilt these and they're really nice. They like, I don't know what they use. It kind of looks like Cerakote, but I'm assuming it's just paint. Looks really good. So let's take apart the OE and uh, let's see how this fits. Inside the car, depending on how your setup is, you might need to remove the OE steering wheel or your aftermarket hub. As you can see, mine's already removed. I took out the main nut right here. I think this is like a 21 millimeter, if I remember correctly, um, but you might want to double check. The steering cover right here is going to need to come out, and then the bottom cover needs to come out as well. The side corners right here, that and that, I don't think we need to remove those, but we might need to. I'm not sure if they're even removable. But the uh, controller is going to be right here where the uh, L and R is located. This is for the power mirrors, but I don't have power mirrors anymore, so I need to take that off. If you guys remember when I did the uh, push start setup, I moved this from the other side. This is my dimmer. I still need my dimmer, and this is a defroster. I added this defroster when I got my hardtop. So depending if you have all these, uh, you might need to figure out where to put it. We need to pop out the bottom right here. Now, you gotta remember where these screws come from because there's actually one machine screw down here and uh, sometimes it's easy to forget where these things come from. So it's best to kind of label them on a piece of a cardboard and stick them on the cardboard. Make sure you're careful with the top. You kind of need to juggle this around depending on where your things are pointed, either up or down. There you go. We're gonna have to take all that off anyways. Next, we take off the bottom cover. Now, I use an M5 button head on here, so um, this won't make sense for you guys. For you guys, you might have like a screw here. I think that's what comes stock with a car. But uh, for me, it's a button. Why? Because it looks pretty. No other reason. All right. So my cinema camera is too big to get in here. So I'm gonna show you guys with a GoPro. One bolt right there. One bolt on the other side right here. And then the nuts in the back, you can kind of see them right there holding the bottom of the column right here. So the back right here requires a 12 mil socket. I'm assuming this is going to be kind of hard since it's been here for like a billion years. Let's see. Okay. <sighs> Felt like 20 foot pounds or so. Here's one, now the other one. Oh, okay, I see you. Man, I wish I wasn't so fat. Ish. I need to be small, maybe like Nana thin. Because man, working on Miatas, sometimes you need to be the size of a eight year old to reach some of these spots. Guess doesn't help that I have my seat still on, but oh well. Oh, oh. Can we reach in there? Okay. Okay. This is how your back gets jacked up after you work on your Miata. Awkward snake-like movement. Okay. Next, these boys. Swivelies and extensions for the win. Okay. Now, even if you're not doing power steering column, these two bolts right here sometimes, you need to 
remove them and shift the uh, shims forward to get rid of the play. Sometimes these columns can have like play like this and it's just because of this washer, this washer slides out. Gives you some play. Okay. So column looks like it's free to potty. Next, you're gonna go back here and take out this nut on this U-joint and the cover and everything should just pop right off. So we're gonna try to remove this right now in one piece. Okay. No more wires, everything's good. Right, here we go. off in one piece. Hopefully I don't get snagged. Too bad. Okay. Okay, here we go. We got wires over here. That's getting snagged like I thought they would. Okay, make room. Okay, baby. Let's just come out nice and easy. Okay. All right. Here are the racks side by side. As you can see, they're about the same length, huh? The top one's obviously the new with the motor and the bottom one is the old one. As you can see, this thing gets pretty beat. It's like all rusty and pretty dusty, to be honest. So the new one right here, that's nicely painted. Um, I don't think that'll rust, but I'm surprised from the factory, these things aren't painted or coated uh, in some way or fashion. But next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna cut slots onto the uh, set screws right here that holds the steering. Uh, it's like a lock and switch assembly here, and we're gonna transfer it over to that one. thing left here is the key so what I'm gonna do for this you can either use a Dremel to cut a slot on here to twist it or you can use a chisel to, to back this out this is basically just a screw but it's uh, it doesn't have a head funny huh so you're gonna need to back it out you could use a Dremel to cut a slot on it to back this out, or you could use you know, other things, but you could use a chisel to back this out. And you'll start seeing it move. Once you have it moving, you can just pop it out. So we're just gonna do this for a minute here. Hey, mate. Okay, wow, for, for an M8 bolt, that was not tight at all. It's been about two days since we started working on this car. It's been delayed a little bit because I wanted to get a new uh, combination switch right here that you can see. The old one right here has a broken clip or a tip if you look closely right there where the clock spring would go. The new one right here has both of them, the little prongs. And also the uh, markings have been kind of rubbed off on the old one because it's 25 years old. And uh, this one right here is nice and fresh. The uh, local dealership didn't carry this, so they had to order it. There's about five in the country, so now four because I have one of them. So these things aren't really like, uh, it's not really a common part that anyone carries. And it's kind of expensive, to be honest. I think MSRP was about 500 bucks. I'm just replacing it because of those broken pieces. And then, you know, the markings right here is rubbed off. Okay, here's the final setup. So you can see the Circuit Sports hub is back on. It's not tightened yet because I still might need to rotate this, but it's back on. The signal assembly is back in. This is for the wipers, this is for the signal over here, but everything's back on. This cover right here, the little top uh, clamp, I redid that and it's painted nice and silver instead of being nice and rusted. And uh, I added the, the dots right there to signify that this has been checked and torqued so as you can see, the control panel is going to be right here by the dimmer and my defroster. 
and then the wiring which is down here so we have this guy right here the gray this is going to go to the motor uh, ecu by itself and then this guy right here all right my my add a circuit basically that's what it is um, you could put it anywhere in the fuse box behind here i'm going to show you in a minute and you just pick a slot what i'm going to do is i'm going to use the 15 amp closest to the uh, the outside of the cover which is the engine one and then the last one with the eyelet this guy right here whoops this guy right here just needs to go on the ground so behind here you'll see the fuse box and the last one right there the 15 amp that's what i'm going to be using because it's out of the way so when i do this i add it right there it's not in the way of the fuse box or else I had to cut up the fuse box and you know do mods or I could you know remove the fuse box you could use the wiper side so you could see right here there's a wiper area you could use the wiper area too if you wish um, it really doesn't matter which side you use just pick one as long as it's a switched uh, option which which means when you turn on the key to accessory it's hot all right okay so for ease of access i'm gonna take off the 15 amper from the outside okay and then i'm gonna take this dude i'm just gonna route it to where it's free now i have some slack here because that's how i want it right now uh, you could cut this shorter too but as you can see right here the add a fuse circuit uh, the red one right here is a 10, which fuses the power source or the pyrometer for the power steering and the 15 amp basically goes back to how it was over here. So 15 amp that I removed is now being replaced with a 15 amp with a little fuse jumper. Okay, now once that's done, you take your cover and you replace it and everything should be nice and tidy still. So this is why I said you need to find one that isn't in the way of the fuse box cover. Because if it's in the way of the fuse box cover, like so, you're gonna need to cut it. But you see that right there? It's out of the way of the fuse box cover. Next, the grounding cable right here. We're gonna find a spot right on the chassis. It could be anything metallic on the chassis. So if you look over here, anywhere that there's a free spot stud or anything so you know like like right here would work or there's a stud way back over there that that could work but what i'm going to use is this relay back here so it's a little bit hard to see i'm not sure if the lighting is going to work out very well here but see this relay i took this relay off already then the nut and i'm going to place the cable right on top of it now, it's gonna be a little tricky to do this on camera, but essentially I'm gonna put it right there on that stud. All right, so I'm gonna do this off camera and then I'll be back. So as you can see, the ground wire is connected now, the pigtail's right here and it's bolted on to that nut. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna actually take this guy, this gray one right here and connect it to the ECU. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I tried to slap this thing in already and uh, to be honest, I wanted to mention this to you guys. So when you do this, you're not going to be like, how the heck did Dion do it so easy on the video? Well, I didn't. Remember the hanger? I took off the hanger and installed it on the car already. The little hanger piece with the two nuts. I'll show you right here on the old unit. The old unit right here still has the hanger. Remember that hanger from earlier? Well, anyways. I tried to slide this thing on and the hanger caught every single wire possible down there. And the motor right here actually comes really close to the, uh, the heater control module, you know, assembly on the right hand side on the bottom of the floor, uh, but it, it'll, it'll slide in there. It's really close and the brake light switch will probably get smashed a little by the wiring. So you need to move that around just FYI. And I also took out the switches right here, the combination switch, this guy right there, because it's also a pain in the butt to juggle that around when you're installing this. So just a few uh, 
<laughs> just a few pointers after I've attempted to do this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna attempt to do it again without all those components connected and see if it's easier. Let me show you what's going on inside. All right, inside the car, this is what we've got. Like I said, the wiring harnesses right there, you can move them out of the way, but if you don't, um, those things will get caught and it's a total pita. And right there, that's the little hanger all the way to the back. Let me zoom in real quick. See that? I've already installed it. You see the red dot on the uh, one o'clock position there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hopefully just drop this whole assembly in. And on the, the right side right here, see that white spot? That's where the, uh, the motor will rest. But it comes really close to hitting, it's not gonna hit. The trick is just to move this slightly to the side and you should be okay. And earlier, I showed you guys how to install the, uh, the switch, this boy right here. All right, so pretty easy. I used the uh, add a circuit, added it to the uh, engine, I guess the engine fuse and then this goes to the ECU. After I'm done, I'm just gonna take all these wires, zip time out of the way, and we should be good. Okay, here's where we're at. We got the top bolt holding on to the column. It's not fully bolted up yet. As you can see, I can move it around. What I'm trying to do right now is make sure that I clear all of the electrical wires, relays, and whatever else is down here. If I shoot you up here, you kind of see this mess of relays right now that's all stuck to the left side. And uh, I'm gonna need to find you house for all these, these relays. I took out most of the bracketry back here, as you can see, but everything's in. I can't see back here, I'm sure you guys can, but Looks like the uh, the shaft is in. I gotta put the bolt back in there. And uh, I need to make more room all the way around the column itself. But so far, it's getting there pretty good. The, uh, the biggest tip I would say is take off the, uh, the combination switch right here and then mount the, the hanger first right here. And that way you have something to you know, slide it on while you're doing all this stuff. Because if you have your seat in the car, it's kind of a bitch, but it's still doable. And the torque specs on these things, not very tight, just FYI. I think it's like 20 foot pounds maybe. So uh, to be honest, you could just hand tight this good and tight. But if you really wanted to torque this, I would assume since it's a M8 bolt, it would be somewhere around 25 foot pounds. Now we're gonna connect the power source. This is an eight foot wire that's gonna go straight to my battery. The stock kit comes with a wire lead that goes straight to your alternator. So it depends on how you wanna do it. I made this because I wanna do a unit that goes straight to the back of the battery. This guy right here is a ground lead. You just need to ground this somewhere in the chassis up here. So on the left side of the screen, you can see the grounding cable for the knob, and then the big lug right there is for the motor itself, connected to the OE stud right under the dash, and I replaced the nut with a stainless steel locking. So on the back of the car right here, you can see my PC925 Odyssey battery. This battery is slightly bigger than stock and also packs a little bit more capacity for added accessories like fuel pump, uh, electric steering columns, and you know bigger injectors and big fans. The bracketry right here, I custom designed. We're gonna be offering that soon. And everything's pretty much bolt on. The back over there on the wall, you can see the CarTech battery isolator. That basically cuts off power if something happens, fire, whatever. And uh, it's basically my master switch. These two maxi fuses, one's for the cooling fan, one's for the steering. And that's pretty much it. Everything back here is nice and clean. I know it seems like there's a bunch of wires, but it's, it's very neat and everything's uh, wrapped with that plastic braid. Here's the finished product. I didn't want to have to go through every single step of putting everything back on. It's basically the reversal of the removal, but as you can see right there, everything looks factory. You can't even tell that there's a power steering unit under there. It's a very tight fit, I must say, but it all fits in there. The wiring's a little bit tricky. That probably took me the most time is trying to figure out where to put the wiring um, because 
you know, the stock steering column is very, very compact and uh, the new one's quite big. And I had to figure out very creative ways to move all the wiring out of the way without putting unnecessary tension on it. As you can see over here, we got my Klontek quick release with my Rivery full carbon fiber steering wheel. The uh, hub right there is from Circuit Sports and everything works together. Now I'm gonna show you how this thing actually works. All right, right now the car is off, there's no power. I'm gonna try to move the steering wheel, all right? See, lots of grunting, no moving. All right, now we're gonna turn it on. Now, the button right here will adjust basically how strong the assist is. You could go zero, and then you could go quarter, or you could go full send. I'm just gonna go full send right now to show you guys how this actually works. Watch this, one finger, all right? That's crazy. Look at that, all right? Super easy. Mind you, I have 285 slicks up front. That is a lot of tire and a lot of grip. And I can turn the steering wheel with one finger. Look at that. So awesome. If you wanted to do less, you could turn this down. and It'll feel kind of more natural. All right. You can't do this with one finger. Kind of, but it depends on the feel, how you want it to basically um, drive. All right. So I prefer it maybe about a quarter. And that's pretty much what you need on the Miata. And it feels very natural. Feels kind of like the OEM power steering, all right? The, the hydraulic. If you send it all the way, it feels like, like a Volvo station wagon, you know? Very comfortable, super easy. There's a lot of assist. You don't have to worry about anything. Now, the only bad part about that is this isn't like vehicle speed sensing, right? So when you're going, you know, 80 miles per hour on the freeway, it is very, very sensitive. And I don't, I, don't, I don't like that, I mean, some people do, I, I don't like that. So I'll just turn it down maybe a quarter, and then we're good. All right, initial thoughts on this kit. It's about a seven out of 10 difficulty for install. Uh, the, the trickiest part, I guess, is moving all the wiring out of the way because the stock unit, the stock steering column, is a very tiny, compact unit, basically a stick. And then we add this giant, bulky thing with a motor, with an ECU. The funny thing is, once the cover is on, you can't tell that it's actually there. So that's a good thing. Just trying to move all the wiring out of the way and zip tying them so they don't pull on each other is a bit tricky. The brake light switch was actually trickier than I thought because it's literally on the back of the, uh, some of the wiring looms. So you'll see what I mean if you try to attempt to do this. Uh, but that's probably like the, the, the hardest part is just finding room for the wiring. As far as dropping in the steering column, it's, you know, two bolts and two nuts. That's pretty much it. I would mark where my center is just in case. But if you have a, a quick release and a hub, you just slap it in and then find the, the center. You, just, you know, this, I don't know what the teeth is. I think it's like 36 uh, teeth on the spline. You can just turn the wheel until it's centered. Uh, what I did was I marked the front right here so I know where the center is and I just put it back. But I mean, that's not really the hardest thing here. Uh, as far as feel, it is insanely crazy when you turn that thing all the way up to 100%. It feels like a Cadillac or the Volvo that's outside that I was driving today. It's, it's so, so easy to turn the wheel. One finger. All right. Mind you, before the steering wheel or the, the steering wheel, before the, the power steering electric column, this thing was a bear to move. All right. I have 285 Pirelli Zero Slicks and dude, it, it was almost like a big workout. To turn this wheel outside, I mean, my garage floor is kind of smooth, so it's a little bit easier here, but when I took it outside the other day, I was like, holy crap, dude, if I'm in a freaking parking lot, I'm gonna be doing this, oh, oh, oh. And it's, it's basically like that, like I showed you earlier. It is a total bear, but with the electric power steering unit, super easy, super easy, like, like insanely easy. Anyone can turn the wheel. Uh, you know, if, if that's what you're going for, drivability on the street, I would go with that unit. Now, if you're using this for the track, I probably won't use 100% power. I'd probably use maybe like 25% power and it'll be really nice, all right? Now, does it feel the same as a manual rack? I'll let you know. 
a lot of people say like it's detached because now you have a steering uh, column motor and it, you know the car feels numb well I could see how that could happen now I'm gonna show you like a very generic uh, <laughs> idea of how this thing works so the steering column that goes to the wheel all right there's a steering column shaft that goes to the wheel the motor and then the actual uh, steering shaft that goes to your steering wheel those things float all right and then the motor is in the middle now when you input something from this side where the steering wheel is this thing will turn and it'll tell the motor turn this much then it starts turning all right and if the the twist is coming from the tire from the road side it'll twist but the motor will know like oh that's not coming from the steering wheel so i'm just going to dampen that and i'm going to ignore that signal so it's not going to move your steering wheel all right because if it did that would kind of jack you up because imagine the power steering unit sending power steering back to your wheel that's that's like that would jar you all right so what what this this it, it's almost like a coupler effect motor two couplers when the steering wheel turns or the steering wheel turns up here the motor will know how much to turn if the wheel forces the shaft to turn the motor will know that it's coming from the wheel itself and it's not going to apply that to your steering wheel so most people think that feels detached because when the wheel moves on a manual power steering rack without any motor assist, you can feel everything, all right? And, and that's the direct feeling that some people like. If you give this a chance and you actually go drive it, you might actually really like it and you might be like, wow, this is actually really fast and really cool. Um, but if you're married to the, the idea of a manual rack is extremely awesome, precise, and it, you're connected to the street, and I love feeling every single bump, then you might not like this. 